Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob, and we've had quite a bit of a, a rally going on for quite some time, but there's some new information that may cool it just a little bit. And what I'm talking about is there was a report put out by the Biden administration from the White House, and it talks about the administration's roadmap to mitigate cryptocurrencies risks. Now, before I go into the report, let me just say this. I've read this a couple of times now. And to me, it just looks like they're trying to get a handle on the centralized players, not the crypto products themselves, which I think is what people get a little bit concerned about, but the commingling of funds, the different traditional financial markets getting into with the different crypto centralized players and the different problems that they're having. And this is what they're trying to uh, alleviate. So let's just dive right in. So the first thing is they're going to give a little bit of history about what's going on in May. A so-called stable coin imploded, prom prom prompting a wave of insolvencies. Just months later, a major crypto exchange collapsed. Everyday investors suffered serious losses. They're talking about Luna and, of course, FTX, but also the Voyagers and the Celsius and the BlockFi's. At President Biden's direction, we have spent the past year identifying the risks of cryptos. To be sure, the tech powers crypto may offer ways to make payments faster, cheaper, and safer. That is true. But this framework identifies clear risks. Again, it's not about the product themselves. It's about the people that are handling it in the centralized aspect. Crypto platforms and promoters often mislead consumers. They have conflicts of interest. They fail to make adequate disclosures or commit outright fraud. Look, we talked about this yesterday. We talked about this with uh, Kim Kardashian, got brought in by the SEC. She paid a fine of like $1.4 million. And the reason was because she was promoting an Ethereum Max, or whatever the heck it was called. And she didn't give any disclosures like, hey, they pay me a boatload of money to talk about that. All That's all it was. And I thought to myself, look, I, I have to say, I have to disclose everything in the, in the links in the description that there are affiliate links or there's a, there's a channel promoter. And I always say, I'm biased. If you don't want to use the affiliate links, you don't have to, you can go right there. But if you do use them, of course, I get something. And of course, you get some kind of discount or something like that. But the promoters that don't disclose anything, those are the ones that are screwing it up for the rest of us. And even in the in the realm of YouTube and TikTok and social media and everything else, I have heard stories, and you know who those people are. I will not identify them here, who they get paid a certain amount of crypto in a new emerging token, and they don't uh, buy into it. They have no skin in the game. They promote it. They pump, they pump, they pump. They dump on their constituents or their subscribers and essentially rinse, wash, repeat. I have no idea why these people still have channels. It's amazing to me. But it's the truth. And that is essentially what this report is talking about. On top of that, the banking agencies issued joint guidance on the imperative of separate risky digital assets from the banking system. Now, to be fair, there are still a lot of banks that are uh, on board, everything from NYDIG and BNY Mellon. So there are some agencies that say, hey, we shouldn't really get into too much of this risky aspect to each their own. Agencies have redoubled their effort to fight fraud, including the proliferation of false or misleading claims about crypto assets being insured by the FDIC. I can tell you who that is. That's Voyager, as they came on here and said, yeah, yeah, we're totally uh, backed by the FDIC. Wasn't the case. And there's some nuances to it. I don't want to get into it here, but it was just the case. That was just the truth. In the coming months, the administration will also unveil priorities for digital assets research and development, which will help the tech powering cryptos Protect consumers by default. And it, this is what it is from the Federal Register. You can check this out. But it does say quite clearly, responsible innovation, digital assets could provide significant benefits for the American people. And we're going to take a look at that with the California DMV and Tezos in just a bit. So to finish up, Congress should expand regulators' powers to prevent misuse of customers' assets, again, with the centralized play. And this is the big thing. And I have to agree here. This is right. Legislation should not green light mainstream institutions like pension funds to dive headlong into crypto markets. Traditional financial institutions limited exposure to crypto has prevented turmoil in crypto from affecting the broader financial system. It would be a grave mistake to enact legislation that reverses course and deepens the ties between crypto and the financial system. What they're talking about here is this. There was a pension fund in Canada, and they dumped a large chunk of their pensions, of their funds into FTX. What does that mean now? All the people that put their money in that, that is gone. And the reason is because me personally, Sam Bankman-Fried and Gary Gensler of the SEC had multiple sit-downs. 
Gary Gensler had an inside track what was going on, and he did not protect those consumers. So I don't know where they're talking about like we should strengthen it. In, in reality, what how I see it is Gary, who is a top cop, didn't do his job. I could be wrong here, but let me know anything about that in the comments section. But what they're saying here is that in the traditional financial system, if you have major amounts of pensions, <clears throat> we've already got problems with pension funds already. If they go into more of these types of uh, centralized players or exchanges and put funds into it and they collapse, what does that mean for the overall market and for the, the, the strength of the financial system here in America? Well, it'll probably collapse. And is the reason because of the greed and the fraud of centralized players, and that's what they're trying to get their hands around, not the crypto products themselves. I don't see that being the case. Let me know where I'm wrong. And let's finish up with this piece here. So the administration wholeheartedly supports responsible tech innovations that make financial services cheaper, faster, stronger, more accessible. Again, but they do need safeguards. The digital economy works for the many, not just the few. So again, I still think this is a centralized play issue. I don't see this as a crypto project. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And there is one more piece that could probably cool off this, this rally, which is that you're gonna hear more about this uh, United States ceiling debt. Here's the usdebtclock.org. And you can see that the debt right now is 31.5 trillion. Not too bad. America's number one. Well, not really. And there's other people with, with more debt than us, but this all comes back to, uh, an article a couple of weeks ago, Janet Yellen warned that the federal government would reach its statutory debt limit of $31.4 trillion on January 19th. And I was thinking that we would see some kind of like showdown with Congress or maybe they would halt, they would halt the government. But no, just keeps going up to $31.5 trillion. But they're really talking about it now. But you're going to hear a lot of people talk about, well, if this happens and they shut down the government, you're going to see some turmoil in the markets, which is true. Debt ceiling. If you didn't know, I didn't realize it was raised this month, but it's been raised 45 times in the last 40 years. So what's one more? The past debt ceiling crisis has roiled markets. The S&P 500 shed 17% in 2011, but their effects haven't lasted long. And this is this is how you know the market is unrealistic, is because if this if the debt ceiling has been, been raised essentially every darn year, forever, for the last four decades, uh, why would the market go down? It's not like it's a big deal, I mean, for the overall. And people will say, well, America might, might default in its loans. It's not going to default in its loans. All it's going to do, it's going to do what it's always done. It's going to be the, the U.S. government, the U.S. dollar is the, is the reserve currency of the world. They're just going to keep printing. That's what it's going to be. They're going to turn the printers on. They're going to say, <laughs> we'll pay off the debt and that's it. And then it really hammer this, this point home. Here's a history of the debt ceiling levels from 1940 on. And this is in billions of dollars. In 41, they added 16 billion. And I want you to notice one thing that in some, like 1956, or no, excuse me, 1946, they took off $25 billion, meaning they reduced the ceiling because they were economically efficient. You don't see that too much or at all moving forward into the 80s, the 90s. And look at this 2012, 2.1 trillion, 1.7 trillion, 2017. And of course, the last one, December 16, 2021, of 2.5 trillion. So, I know people are going to talk about like uh, the end, the, the sky is falling. You can play it however you want to. Me personally, if they start to announce it and the market goes down, so much the better. I dollar cost average. I'll just snap up some really cheap crypto. But that's what we got. What do you think about that? And then to finish off with some good news, I think this is pretty interesting, actually. Uh, the DMV, the California DMV, is going to digitize the car title management via Tezos. I still have some Tezos. Unfortunately, it's on the Celsius network. Anyhow. The move is part of a collaboration between DMV, Tezos, and a software firm called Oxhead Alpha. And it's going to be essentially a shadow ledger or it's going to be a private blockchain. California DMV's chief digital officer, Ajay Gupta, says he wants the shadow ledger ironed out within the next three months. So it's not like it's going to be years in the future. It's going to happen very quickly. And following on, on from that is looking to roll out applications such as digital wallets to hold and transfer NFT car titles. That's interesting with the DMV acting as a middleman to oversee such operations, kind of like OpenSea, I suppose. I thought it was interesting. That's uh, a real world use case. And that's what we call, ladies and gentlemen, utility. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, not that YouTube's gonna notify you anyhow, but that is it for today. I do appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.